Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. Uh, this is more pointed towards back towards the new beekeepers. I like to go back every now and then, remembering the beekeepers or upcoming beekeepers, because sometimes we'll kind of get ahead of ourselves and forget about them. And when we get talking about queens and such, so what I want to do is go in here and show some hive identifications. There's some things in the hive that you need to look for. And that's what we're doing today. So let's start with, with this frame. This is one, this is the outside frame. And your outside frames will always have your honey. Your honey frames will be on the outside of the hives when you pull your frames out. And just to show you, try to get it a little bit close up here where we can see. This is a honey frame, mostly. Honey, it may be hard to pick up on the video, but right here on the very top is capped honey. This is a small colony, so I figure it'd be good to show it because there's not a whole lot of bees on it to cover up everything that we need to see. So that's the reason I'm, it, this was a this was a split that we done probably about two weeks ago. And it's looking really good. We've got four frames, about three and a half frames of bees already. So it's it's coming along pretty good. But it's perfect to show some hive identification so you get an idea. Now, now right below it, you can see the cells of honey that's still uncapped. It's uncapped nectar. This is capped honey. You can see the difference in it. See how it's kind of whitish looking. I remember... Uh, years ago and a lot of people that that's trying to start out beekeeping it's hard for them to identify capped brood and capped honey and it really is and sometimes we've got to go back and remember the new beekeepers and what they're trying to identify here we're going into uh, a lot of videos people doing videos on uh, doing splits and grafting queens were way out of their uh, over their head so Remember that any uh, YouTubers that's uh, doing videos, every now and then step back and teach the very basics of beekeeping so, so the new in inspiring beekeepers won't be so overwhelmed by information that, that they absolutely have, they don't know anything about. So this is why we do this every now and then. So like I said, your outside frames will have primarily honey on it. Some, some of them will have some pollen and we'll point them out here. See these frames, see, see the cells right here? The darkened cells, that's your pollen. It'll, it'll fill up about halfway to the cell most of the time. Most of the time. And it, it'll, be, it'll vary in color. So remember that, it's not always yellow pollen like you would picture. Uh, this right here is particularly is, is fairly a good medium dark brown pollen. From whatever sources they come, from that's what the color will determine of the pollen. This is the outside frame. We'll pick it out and hopefully we'll see the queen. I can show you the queen. And I'll point out some some drones. Uh, this colony here has an excellent queen. She has got a lot of cat brood. That's a bee sting. <laughs> see how she stuck to my... And when they sting you, if they're, you can smell the pheromone, you can smell it, so it will put off an alarm pheromone to them. That can cause them to sting you more. So, this is capped brood. Look and see how it's brown. See that right here? How it's or not a brown, it's like a more of a tan color. See how the, the difference in the color between it and the capped honey. If you can see right here on the very top, this little spot right here. Is capped honey right below it's the cap brood see the difference white and the cap brood you can actually see the more of the the very top of the cell that they cap over is more pronounced it's more you can actually still see the embossing on the very top or on the honey <clears throat> it's hard to see so that that is this now as you get into your look down here uh, look at the cell different size right here see right here Get this close enough. See right here 
how small those cells are right there, that will be your worker cell right there. If you get down in here to your bigger cells, these drawn out cells, they'll be used for stored honey or drones. Uh, drones, is, in case some of you don't know, is the male bee. And when I see one here, it's still a little bit dark out. It's, uh, it's about 7.30. Not a whole lot of light. This frame right here, it's mostly cat brood. Cat brood, in case I didn't even say, is baby bees, baby worker bees that'll hatch. So that's what you got in this uh, frame here. This hive here will uh, explode in population. It's got like three solid frames of cat brood and not a whole lot of honey. Every one of them's got just a little bit on the very tip top. So it's a... Uh, it's really going to take off fast. Okay, that was frame two. This is frame three. This also also should be another frame of brood. And you can see, <coughs> see the brown? See right here? Get my camera camera moved a little bit okay like i said this is mostly capped brood let's flip it over look and see we'll see if we can spot the queen i don't see her on this side and it may be easier for you to see because uh, i'm kind of looking at the camera at the same time make sure that we're getting a good visual of it i'm not seeing the queen yet Try to put them back exactly like you got them. Uh, the honeybees will fit them together almost like a puzzle. So your frames, if you pull them out and you get them mixed up, it, it won't fit together as, as nicely if you get them mixed up. And another thing too, if you do get them mixed up, you, you want to keep primarily your honey on the outside and your brood towards the middle. So if you go flipping a, a honey frame towards the, the center, to me it's just it's better to keep things where the bees put them in place. I want to point you out right here. See right here is a drone. See the drone right here? See the workers beside him? See how much bigger he is than the rest of the bees? You get a very good close-up of him right there. That's a drone. They got big bug eyes and see the, the workers are around him, the size difference. So that way you can identify what they look like. I didn't use any smoke on it because I didn't really want to chase the queen off the frame. Sometimes that does happen. Right here, you can see, is another drone. Right here, look how much bigger he is. Drones only serve one purpose, and that's to breed a virgin queen, an un unmated virgin queen. Uh, if you look down in these cells right here, you'll see you'll see like a white gob, like a grub that's curled up. Okay, that's that's larva. That's baby bees before they're capped. So that's what you're seeing right there. I hope that shows up. I don't know if we can spot any eggs and see any eggs in there. It's still kind of dark. The eggs will look like, if it doesn't show up on the camera here, they look like a miniature grain of rice sticking straight up when they're first laid. That's what they'll look like. They're hard to see. You can see up through here. Let's see. Look, you got more pollen. See the pollen up here? See the dark pollen? There's another drone. Drones do not sting, by the way. The workers do. Baby, born, baby bees just born will not sting because they're so tender. Right here's a baby bee. And the way you can tell, look how they, they it's like uh, you bleached them is what it looks like. It looks like they have no color to them because they don't yet, because they're babies. And they haven't developed all their color. See right here, they're kind of white, dusty 
look, and that's your baby bees. They're not very old. They can't fly. If you threw one up in the air, it'd hit the ground. Everything else there is, uh, that you see with a lot of color in it is uh, more towards your adult bees. Here's another drone here. Here's a drone here. Here's a drone here. Okay, on this frame right here, I'm going to show you. Okay, this right here that you see, this wax, is called foundation. And the little designs that you see in it is called embossing. And what it does, it draws out a blueprint for those bees to draw out. As you can see it coming, as you can see it progressing over here, you can see that this is drawn partly the way out. See the difference here, then the embossing of the foundation here. And see how here, they'll draw out whatever you give them here. So they use this as a, as a, a blueprint. That's what they'll start on. And this is what they have drawn out so far on this frame. Just wanted to point that out. I just spotted her. She's one of those queens. Sometimes you'll have queens that, that stay hid. They stay out of sight. And that's just how the, some of them are. They just stay hid. Right here, if you can see, here's the queen. If we can get her flushed out of there, get her out here where we can see her a little bit. But she's staying hid. But right here she goes. Sometimes they'll crawl right up under the other bees. And it's so hard to see them. So hard to see them sometimes but right there she goes see how her abdomen is longer than the rest of the bees you can follow her there on the this one's a little bit darker some queens are a little, little bit lighter some of them are almost like a, a like a redhead uh, queen uh, they'll have you, these are part these are all Italian queens but like I've said before, I don't believe there's any such thing as 100% pure breed. It's just nearly impossible when you have drones that could be from anywhere. So you never know. You never know. Uh, but right there she is. Get a good look at her. So you know to, how to identify her. She's right beside the workers. And then right here's another drone. See how big he is? Big and fat and bug eyes. So, and th this right here, I didn't explain this. Uh, the comb that you see is called drawn comb. That's what they refer to. What bees have built up off of the foundation is drawn comb. So, just so you'll know that. Uh, a lot of these little basics people don't don't think about. That new beekeepers have no idea when you say drawn comb. They're like, what is that? So kind of remember, uh, beekeepers and YouTubers, go back every now and again on your channel and do a little uh, basic video for the new beekeepers. I always try to think about the new beekeepers because they're the ones that we need to get started to help save these bees to begin with because the more beekeepers we have and they don't need to be con confused by advanced grafting all the time and, and you know such that splits and they, we need to go back to the basics, is all I'm saying, every now and then with your channels. Please do that. Uh, there's some more capped honey right there. Now, in a bigger hive, what you'll see is you, you'll see the whole frame. It won't be just like a little part of the frame like this. It'll be the entire frame covered up with, uh, with honey. But this being a, a, a new colony... A young small colony it just has just a small amount on it uh, but like I said let's get this back in here let's see I'll pick up my tripod here where we can get down in the hive here now and then this this right here and I haven't mentioned yet is what we call a nuke or a nucleus colony colony it holds five frames it's a small it's a miniature hive basically and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back together just like it came. But the only thing different I'm gonna do, there's one frame that's not been drawn out yet, and I'll show you that here in a second. 
<clears throat> this is a a frame with which is what, what we call it has a starter strip on it but the starter strips actually was an old frame that was all cut out except the very top of it here that's a starting point where those bees will start and they'll draw that all the way down i'm gonna put it more towards the middle to encourage them to to draw that out that way you have a good uh, frame of bees on each side of it it was a, all the way over here on this side and that will get them to draw that out so so basically like i said that's that's your nucleus colony i've got them all stirred up i didn't use a smoke uh new beekeepers always get you a smoker i try to encourage uh, new beekeepers to use smokers all the time i didn't with this because i didn't want to run the queen off the frame because we had a hard time finding her anyway uh now what we got here that goes on the very top is my feeder box and then there's the feeder and it is it's a little bit dirty i rinse them off but they get they get dirty pretty quick and that's where we put our sugar water now right now we're in a honey flow and even if you put sugar water on them they wouldn't touch it they might nibble on it a little bit but i tell you they they are there's so much out there right now that they're not even bothering what i put on there so here in another couple of videos i'll I'll, I'll go back and I'll show you, uh, you know, what a, what a 10 frame, what an 8 frame supers that go on the very top. So kind of stay tuned for that. Every now and then I'll, I'll go in a little bit more detail with, uh, with, with different size boxes and such. And then you got your, your mini mating nukes that we have that are two frame right here. We'll talk about that in a later video. Just kind of uh, keep in touch at uh, Barnyard Bees YouTube channel. And, and that's about it, folks. Just want to show you that. Going back to the basics today on a good Sunday morning. And don't forget, please click on the little bell, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Born Nerd Beast.